Hello everyone, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair here. I got another video for you. A simple little video. This is a Dell Inspiron 6400 that has a screen issue. When this computer was brought in, the customer was complaining that the screen was uh, flickering. So what I'm trying to do here is to replicate the problem so we can determine it where to attack this repair from. Now as I'm moving the uh, the lid around I'm also noticing that the uh, hinges appear to be a little loose on this laptop also which is common for the Dell Inspiron 6400 series and as we can see here uh, the flickering of the screen has started as the customer complained about And now it is my job to determine what is causing this issue. It could be the screen itself, could be the bulb, it could be the inverter. It also could be one of the cables coming from the inverter, going to the screen, or the data cable. So we got to determine uh, which one that may be. So right here, the screen actually goes out completely. The laptop is still on. So what I'm going to do is look for a faint image on the screen using a flashlight. This way I can determine and rule out the data cable as being the problem. So we're going to look really closely here. This, this laptop has no backlight. It is powered on. The screen flickered and then shut completely off. So I need to take a look here and see if I can see any of the wording on the screen. So as we take a real close look here, I can see some lettering on the screen faintly. So this pretty much rules out the data cable as being the issue because there is data getting to that screen. So now we're down to either the inverter or the bulb. And if, the, if it is the bulb, then we're just going to replace the whole screen. But we need to, to determine which one it is. So we're going to have to take this bezel off. First we're going to take the switch cover off and that easily just pries right up one end of it. Easy to take off on these Dell 6400s. You gently just pry it up and it unsnaps. That'll also expose uh, the the hinges that we want to look into also because I suspect that they're a little loose Now, as you can see here, uh, these are one of the screws here holding the hinge down, and indeed, they have become loose. So, while I'm here, I'll probably go ahead and just tighten these uh, these screws down just to help help out with that situation. But you know, right now we just need to get this bezel off and keep diagnosing this screen issue we're having. Okay, pretty routine here. We're going to start off by removing these rubber feet that cover the screws on the bezel. And I'm using a eyeglass screwdriver just to kind of dig them out. They're just glued into place. Pretty easy stuff. Now these corner ones I've had some trouble with. So instead of forcing things here on these, I'm going to skip them just to make sure that, you know, those aren't there just for cosmetics that's just the way I work I mean if something's difficult to take off of a laptop that I'm having to force I'll I'll wait um, to determine later you know whether indeed it needs to come off um, I, I really do think that they need to because there's screws under them but I'm having a bit of a trouble with them so you know to be on the safe side I'm gonna leave them be the two top corner ones until I can determine for sure that there are screws under there so we got the rest of the uh, rubber feet here removed. We got two in the top center also. So we can proceed to take the screws out of the bezel. Now most screen bezels normally are held, held down with screws on the corners. There are some cases where the bezel doesn't have any screws and that it's actually kind of double-sided taped to the back lid and then there's also situations where you have to pretty much take the whole 
top lid display everything uh, you know remove the hinges and and pull it up off of the base of the laptop but these uh, Inspirons here are pretty easy as far as removing the bezel so I've got the screws out I'm going to try to uh, work with my spudger here to separate the bezel from the back lid and right here at the top corner I'm going to get some resistance so that resistance pretty much tells me that yes those two corner rubber feet that I left on there do need to come off so I just wanted to be sure to confirm that didn't want to go any further didn't want to take off anything that was unnecessary which I kind of figured it would be anyways but you know just to be on the safe side so I'll go ahead and remove these other two stubborn stubborn rubber feet here off these two screws so yeah there's one golden rule in my opinion about laptops if you have to force something to come off then you better recheck everything because a lot of times it's not meant to come off or there's something else you have to take off to remove the part so that's why if I get any resistance anywhere on a laptop teardown I just stop and I'm be very cautious okay so I'm going to take these two screws out and we're going to go ahead and uh, see if we can get this bezel off here should come off relatively simple now Now we want to use our spudger spudger is a plastic tool and it'll aid in not scratching the any part of the plastics or also the screen is important here we don't want to scratch the screen either so spudger is a perfect tool for this uh, pretty basic here the way this bezel comes off like majority of laptops it's one of the easier ones there's no tape there's no double sided tape um, clips the clips you know come unsnapped relatively easy once the screws are undone sometimes with uh, different brands laptops these clips actually break off and that's always a, an extra hassle but not in the case of this 6400 Inspiron here okay so I pretty much got all the snaps undone and this bezel just comes right off nice and easy and that exposes that exposes the hinges and these hinges here as you can see have loose screws so I'm gonna go ahead now and take care of that the best that I can anyway we're gonna just tighten these screws up on both sides so we can go ahead and uh, get that little problem solved tighten them up really good hopefully they won't come back out now I've elected not to use any glue or thread lock here and I think with this uh, model laptop too there's a little bit of a defect on the back lid there as you can see even with the screws tight the hinges are still a little loose so we'll just let that be we've done the best we could on that here is the inverter board so we always want to inspect that be sure it looks like all the wires are plugged into it properly and it looks like that it is but we're going to have to take these uh, screws out here on both sides this is the screen bracket because when we do that we're able to flip our screen forward to gain access to the back side of the screen just a small Phillips head screwdriver will do and uh, you just take those screw those three screws out on each side total of six and that'll be done so I got these screws out here on the side both sides so now I'm going to take my spudger and kind of work it in between the gap at the top of the screen kind of pry it forward and that's going to allow me to just carefully pull the screen back I want to be sure I'm not going to be pulling any wires I want to pay attention to the wire routing where the wires are routed down by the inverter because we want to remember how those wires are routed for reassembly we want to be sure we're not pulling and tugging on any data cable wires or any of the wires that go into the inverter so be sure we have plenty of play take your time and gently pull it forward and in this case we're in pretty good shape 
Now the first thing I'm going to look at here is the data cable to be sure that it is plugged in snugly flush. We want to be sure that that, that first off is okay. And again we want to go ahead and gently lay this down, inspect the data cable. That looks good, which we don't think it's a data cable anyway. All that's plugged in properly. We want to make sure that we're we're not having an inverter issue, so we want to make triple sure that these wires are plugged in. That's the that's the inverter there. The wire that goes to the bulb is the pink wire and the white wire. So that's the one we're really looking at. We want to be sure that's plugged in properly. And we want to be sure the inverter board looks okay, which uh, visually inspecting it doesn't mean anything. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll put put some cushion down between the screen and the keyboard there to keep from scratching it. It would be a good idea. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out another known good screen that lights up. And this is how I'm going to test that inverter. And this will pretty much determine whether it it's the actual inverter or the bulb in the screen. If it's the bulb in the screen then we're going to replace the screen. So here I have my old known good screen that lights up. So we don't need to worry about plugging that into the data cable. What we're going to do is just plug the plug it into the inverter board. So we'll pop out the old inverter plug for the screen that's in the laptop now. And we'll just pop it out. Okay, once it's out, we'll just plug in the the test screen here. Pop it in like that. Looking good. So then we'll pretty much just go ahead and plug in the power source to the laptop. And we're going to power it on and see if the bulb lights up on the test screen. And we're also going to make sure that it stays on. So what we'll do is we'll power on here. And if this screen lights up, the test screen, then, then we know that the inverter probably isn't bad. Here you see the screen did light up. The test screen did. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to leave this on for several hours to be sure we don't get any of that flicker. We're going to kind of play around with it a little bit, move it around and see if it doesn't. And in this case it didn't. Uh, for about a couple hours it's been on, no flicker. So this pretty much was a screen replacement on this laptop. So now that I've determined that it is indeed the bulb in the old screen that is the problem, the inverter seems to be okay, we're going to go ahead and get the model number off the back of that original screen and uh, we'll order us a new one. And that way we are 100% confident that we have diagnosed this screen issue correctly. So that's it for this video and I hope everyone enjoyed it. I'm going to be uploading many more computer repair videos ranging from more screen replacements, different types of laptops, more high-end stuff, hot air rework, power jacks. I like to get into some capacitor replacements down the line. Anyways, um, just tune in. Hit that like button. Subscribe to my feed. I really would appreciate it. You can visit my website at timscomputerfix.com. All one word, Tim's Computer Fix. So until next time, everyone. See you soon.